Okay, this is part three of the God Forbid Doctrine, the amazing God Forbid Doctrine. Now, what I want to show you here in part three is some more verses where Paul says, God forbid. Now, God forbid is the King James words. The actual, actual words, the concordant literal New Testament has it right here. May it not be coming to that. In other words, God forbid. So, I want you to see that there's, there's at least two things going on as we, if we can zip through this quickly. Paul uses this term, God forbid, or may it not be coming to that, on two different occasions, <clears throat> on two different topics anyway. The first topic is that grace is so wonderful that we could even say, let's sin, let's continue to sin that grace may abound. And then the second thing is, he's, he's arguing that, that the law is not terrible, that you could actually, you know, find salvation if you kept the law. You could actually find life if you kept the law. So here, let's go through it, okay? We got Romans 3, <clears throat> starting at 29. Is he the God of the Jews only, or is not is he not also of the nations? Yes, of the nations also. If so be that God is one, who will be justifying the circumcision out of faith and the uncircumcision through faith? So the circumcision boys, they can be justified in something other than faith, but the uncircumcision boys, that's you and me, baby, we're justified through faith. It's a powerful thought. Uh, 31. Are we then nullifying the law through faith? God forbid. May it not be coming that, to that. No. We're sustaining the law. It's a big concept. It's a big concept. You're going to have to explore it for yourself. I'm just going over some highlights here of the phrase, may it not be coming to that. We are sustaining the law. Chapter 4. What then shall we declare that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found... For if Abraham was justified by acts, he has something to boast in. He has something to boast in if he was justified by acts, but not toward God. But what is the scripture saying? It says, now Abraham believes God and it is reckoned to him for righteousness. This is why God, uh, Paul says, may it not be coming to that. This is why he says, don't get distracted. May it not be coming to that. God forbid. Abraham believes God, and that is what reckoned him, and that is reckoned to him for righteousness. How can we be righteous? Not by obeying the law. Just believe God. It's that powerful. Chapter 6. What then shall we declare that we may be persisting in sin? This is verse 1. What, may, what then shall we declare that we may be persisting in sin, that grace should be increasing? God forbid. May it not be coming to that. We who died to sin, how shall we still be living in it? Come on. Just get it together. Move along. Don't be dwelling on sin because we're justified by believing, and even if we persist in sin, it's not a problem. Grace is increasing. God is gracious. Okay, verse 15, what then? Should we be sinning, seeing that we are not under law, but under grace? Come on. May it not be coming to that. God forbid. Should we be sinning, seeing that we are not under law, but under grace? Paul is being his own little devil's advocate here. Are you not aware, verse 16, are you not aware that to whom you are presenting yourselves as slaves for obedience, his slaves you are, whom you are obeying, whether of sin for death or of obedience for righteousness. And this obedience that he's talking about, you'll have to get into it later, it's an obedience of faith. It's not an obedience of obligation. <clears throat> Romans 7 verse 7 what shall we what then shall we declare is the law sin may it not be coming to that I'm going to reach out and and smack you 
God forbid, the law is not sin, but sin I knew not except through the law. So thank God for the law because it made sin increase. As Romans 5, 20 says, the law was given that sin would increase. Not even sin, it says that the offense should increase. So it's the offensive part of sin. But sin I knew not except through the law. So thank God for the law. It makes grace look even better. For besides, I had not been aware of coveting except the law said you shall not be coveting. Now sin, getting an incentive through the precept, through the law, sin getting an incentive through the law, produces in me all manner of coveting. For apart from the law, sin is dead. Sin is important in Paul's message to us about the grace of God. Sin is so important because it reveals our need of God's favor beyond anything we can do. Verse 11, for sin, getting an incentive through the precept, deludes me and through it kills me. So that the law indeed is holy and the precept is holy and just and good became good then death to me come on don't get distracted may it not be coming to that god forbid but sin that it may be appearing sin is producing death to me through good that sin may become an inordinate sinner all by itself through the precept through the law for we are aware that the law is actually spiritual yet i am fleshly having been disposed of under sin. Whew. Chapter 9. According as, as it is written, Jacob I love, and yet Esau I hate. Of course, this is figurative language. God doesn't really hate Esau. God is love, and God intends to be, uh, to bring all under the headship of Christ, okay? According as it is written, Jacob I love, yet Esau I hate. What then shall we be declaring that there is injustice with God? God forbid. May not be coming to that. Stop getting distracted. Stop getting distracted is what this phrase means. It's not that this is a, a literal idea that Jacob I love and Esau I hate. Okay, on to 11. I am saying then, does not God thrust away his people? May it not be coming to that. In this section, Romans 11, he's talking about how Israel hardened their hearts and God helped them harden their hearts because 11.32 says God locks up all together in stubbornness. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite. Paul says, I am an Israelite out of Abraham's seed. Benjamin's tribe. So he's not dissing the people of Israel. He's showing the glories of grace. Verse 11. I am saying then, do they not trip, that is Israel, do they not trip that they should be falling? Come on. May not be coming to that. But in Israel's offense is salvation to the nations to provoke them to jealousy. God has big plans here. Now, if their offense is the world's riches and their discomfiture is the nation's riches, how much rather that which fills them. Okay, so whenever Paul says, may it not be coming to that, or whenever Paul says, God forbid, he's actually trying to shake you, smack you around, grab you by the collar and say, stop it. Let's stick to the point here. And the point, by and large, is that God graciously saves us in the work of Christ on the cross and justifies us by Christ's faith. Okay, how's that for running through these things quickly? I hope you enjoyed it. And leave a comment and share it and like it and so forth and so on. And thank you for spending time with me. Grace to you.